women barely existed. They put out two albums two years apart before imploding because of an onstage fight between band members Matthew and Patrick Flagel, after which Patrick would go on to channel his noisy art pop sentiments through the drag persona Cindy Lee, and a few of the others, including his brother Matthew, would go on to form Viet Cong, who would later become Preoccupations. The two albums, Women and Public Strain, both share similar characteristics but are wildly different. Women is a record I remember for its highlights, black rice, lawn care, shaking hand, etc. It's just over 29 minutes long and swings between noisy soundscapes and oddbeat post-punk. It's a good listen, but Public Strain is the band's true masterpiece. It's an album that takes its time in creating atmosphere. It's slower with a warmth and fuzz that is present from start to finish. It's a sonic blanket of sorts that envelopes every single song, as if you're listening to the band playing in a large cavern during a snowstorm. The mood persists even when the band is playing more technical songs like Heat Distraction and China Steps. But even in these more technical moments, things rarely jump out at you. Mainly because of the fuzz and the haze that obscures things. Patrick Flagel's words are often overcome by the feedback and the noise. To this day, I'm still deciphering lyrics. Which isn't really an issue because it's not what's being sung that's important, it's how it's being sung. The best parts of the record are the subtle moments. A single inflection or a guitar line that peeks out from the background every now and then. The most obvious point of connection between Public Strain and the debut is the sound engineering. A statement that was put out alongside the release of the band's first album starts with the following words. The debut album by Women was recorded by label mate Chad Van Garlen over four months on ghetto blasters, old tape machines in his basement, an outdoor culvert and a crawl space. Sometimes light and spacious, at other times eerie and dense with an ominous weight. A statement that I'd argue applies to public strain just as easily. It's dense. There's a heaviness to it that feels very real. The music and the mood sort of clings to you, threatening to pull you deeper into this cloud of apathy and low-grade depression. Things are never truly sad on public strain. They're dour and impassive. Something that the cover promises, things are chilly and unclear. Which the first song, Can't You See, encompasses perfectly. The song contains a lot of elements that would show up later on the record and is also the source of the album's title. The lyrics are difficult to unravel, they feel very specific. Like Flagel is pulling from real experiences, real feelings and just sort of weaving these things together. The slow nature of the song is contrasted by the more aggressive nature of heat distraction. It's relatively mild, but the steady bass lines and angular melodies do feel tense. The lyrics are even more specific and direct, seemingly recounting a train journey. What should be clear after listening to the first songs are that there aren't really any choruses on the album. There are repeated refrains and recurring motifs, but nothing in the way of a traditional chorus meaning that songs tend to blend together more easily. This is exasperated by the fact that Patrick Flagel uses similar lyrical themes throughout the album and also that the music is played on very similar instrumentation. All this ties things together in a very cohesive manner. China Steps carries a certain aggression with it. The groovy's off kilter and seems to morph throughout the song, switching time signatures with the tempo even slowing down as the song reaches the end. The song's final moments are accompanied by tones and sounds that could be guitars or keys, it's difficult to tell, everything sounding submerged and obscured. By far the most aggressive song in the album is Drag Open. The song is decidedly more punk than anything else in the album, with straight eights and simple grooves. Flagel switches from brooding poetic passages to short phrases. The vague mentions of lungs and vice hearken to some sort of illicit drug use, while words like chartered trips imply that the song's subject has money. But beyond that, there really isn't much else that you can pick out from the song. 
It's not that what Patrick Flagel is saying doesn't make sense. It's just that there is a larger context that seems to be missing. I am a big fan of the angular melodies on the song Locust Valley, which seems to reference a location in New York, but the lyrics don't comment on that in any which way. The woohoos and clean guitar strums lend a very strong surf rock feel to the song. You know, if you were surfing through a blizzard or something. Things slow down as the album enters its final leg. Venus Lockjaw seems polar to drag open. The song is made up of patient guitar melodies and elongated vocal lines. What's remarkable about the album is that despite not knowing exactly what all the words mean, I still walk away feeling like I experienced something important. The album ends with what is to me the best song. The overlapping guitar lines that make up the instrumental make things feel busy. A feeling that's further emphasized by the rhythm section. Flagel's voice is clearer on this one, his higher register cutting through the mix. The song is a series of builds, these high energy passages that are interrupted by softer ones that are usually devoid of any drums. It all climaxes at the end, where Flagel's voice reappears and the band break into a rhythm. What follows is an emotional climax that should not feel as intense as it does. seem to mix metaphorical imagery with reality, but I still walk away feeling like I experienced something, like there is an emotion behind the words and the music that is conveyed despite not understanding all of it. What is very obvious though when reading through the lyrics on the album is that Flagel has a big vocabulary. It's very clear that he chooses his words very carefully and does this seemingly knowing that a lot of it will be obscured and overcome by the music. It's a series of poems sung through distortion and metallic reverb. This feels almost silly to say, but this album really does mean a lot to me. Not really even for any specific reason. There's no time in my life where this album coincides with an emotional upheaval of sorts, but I know that I'm not alone in my appreciation for a public strain. I know that there are other people out there who feel very similarly about this record. There's this coldness to it that I think a lot of people can relate to. And then there's the title, Public Strain. Something that I know I felt and something that I know other people must have felt because we all seem to hover around that point. It's not even that the band tackles the subject of public strain or social anxiety. There's just something about the music that fits appropriately with that title. That there's the sense of wanting not to be there. The sense of wanting to get lost in something. And that's something that the music provides. Like I said, it's the sonic blanket, the sort of comforter that you escape into. This thing that you put on when you're maybe not feeling the best. It probably won't make you cry or really make you feel anything other than apathy. But to some of us, that's a feeling we cherish and a feeling we want. We want to not feel anything. We want to just get lost in music. The album turned 10 recently, and it's, it's strange. In the time between when it was released and now, there really hasn't been anything like Public Strain. I mean, there's nothing that even comes close to sounding like Public Strain sonically or lyrically or emotionally. It's just one of those things that happens once where a band somehow, through sheer force of will or confounding factors that we will never understand, create a record that is undeniably unique and remarkable for that quality. And who knows, maybe women will get back together at some point and produce something in the same vein. It's impossible to tell. Or maybe this will be it. This will be the last thing we can cling onto as being women. And in some ways, that's fine. 
a lot of bands struggle to end their career well. And if this is the final woman album, I think they've accomplished that. Yeah.